Hello, people of the world watching things that have to do with cars on the internet. Welcome to this. My 1974 RA21 Toyota Celica with a big hole where an engine should be. Don't worry, it's gonna go in it soon. Today's mission is inside this box. Cue the box opening music. What kind of a sick trick is taping this thing down? It's a shoe mending machine. <laughs> Promise you, there will be no shoes mended in this video. That's a dirty piece of foam. Well, it's a lot smaller than it looked in the picture. That's what she said. Did they just like hose this? They did, they literally hose this thing down with oil. This thing summarizes what Amazon has turned into. <laughs> this is Amazon in a nutshell. So this is what the legs attach to, I presume. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. I can't believe I paid over a hundred dollars for this. I got screwed. This thing probably cost five bucks to make. Oh, don't worry. It's not like it can fall over on your lap. Oh, wait. <laughs> this thing looks like they literally melted down a bunch of soda cans and just made this twig of metal. It's just jagged. So the keyway goes in there. What is this? Is it my... Like spare parts just the dangling on there. All jokes aside, I was well aware of the fact this thing was gonna be horrendously cheap when I bought it on Amazon, and that was the point. What matters though is if this will get the job done. And I have a feeling it will. Can I have this back, please? Thank you, robot. How does this thing even work? It has instructions, but I'm better off not reading those. Any idiot can make a video on the internet criticizing something without doing any research first. So I did some more research on how to properly set this thing up. I found a guy that did a video on it and actually gave some good steps and instructions on how to improve it. Let's do that. Clean the schmoo off this wheel. You're supposed to do this because of the way that it is. Very nice. Oh, this wheel's dirty. It's gonna make my thread all dirty. I guess I should take my spare parts off. I really want to clean down inside that hole. It's too small for a Q-tip. Like, I get it, they don't want this thing to rust in transit, but what happens if you want to use white thread? Pinch this, that should fit. Pull that string through. This is tight. No, it broke! Carefuling. Yeah, got it. So the thread comes off my little spool. It goes through this arm, around this wheel, up over the little loop thing around the wheel, up over the little loop thing, through this hoop thing, up through the other hoop on the top, down through the rod, out through the needle, and then the bobbin is on its little spool. It goes through a bottom hole and then out through a side hole and up through that plate hole. And I'm going to see now if it will sew some carpet. I mean, I bought this after all to do upholstery work in the Celica, so. It's not so much that this is a difficult machine to learn how to use. Oh, this way. It would help if I actually knew how to sew. <laughs> Let me try a different material. This carpet's kind of difficult. I very easily could have left these clips out and made it look like it was entirely the machine's fault and that it was junk, but the truth is, I'm just an idiot. There, all you have to do is thread your needle and you're ready to go. However, after watching several videos on this, I started to realize that it wasn't just my stupidity of not knowing how to sew. Rather, this thing was also manufactured incorrectly. I have been fiddle fucking with this thing now for going on five hours and I haven't gotten anything stitched. I think I see the problem. It was not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. I didn't have, okay. What about if I just manually? It's not pulling it up like it's supposed to. It is another day and I found that the reason why this wasn't working is the machine was out of time and not like Marty McFly and Doc Brown. In a nutshell, the position of these two little lobes on this shaft are held in place by some set screws, but the relation to those and this big wheel is critical because if it's not correct, the little bobbin on the inside here is gonna rotate at a different rate in which the needle comes up and down and then tries to grab it and pull it. What I ended up realizing is that those lobes held in of set screws were positioned just ever so slightly off from where they were supposed to be. Oh. 
To set the time correctly, you have to have this big wheel with the handle at the 12 o'clock position. With the crank handle positioned at 12 o'clock, this little bobbin and its gear are positioned two teeth off from every single YouTube video I watched on how to orient this. And now that the machine is timed correctly, everything is working like it's supposed to. The final step before I actually use this, I need to adjust the set screw to get the stitching to match the car. So by tweaking that set screw, I can adjust the distance between each stitch to mimic that of the factory door card spacing. Now I get to actually use this thing redo these door panel parts. Door panel, carpet. In case you have forgotten, this is not an upholstery channel, so if I'm using the wrong tools for this job, I'm not an upholstery channel. These are giant gaps in between each thread. Crazy. Okay. Oh, I really need a better stand for this thing. I don't have time to make one though. This is gonna be really tricky because this thing's so curled, but here goes. And just when I thought I had this machine completely set up, ready to go, and I was gonna be able to finish these, this happened. Oh man, I broke a needle. And it was working great too. Needle replaced. Let's try this again. Oh, what is going on here? Everything slowly started to transpire into an absolute train wreck. No! And all the stitches you see right here, I ended up having to pull completely out and start all over from scratch. I am not an upholsterer. I am a mechanic. I did not go to school for upholstery. This looks absolutely terrible. Beholden, version 2.0. This should keep it from slipping off the side like I kept doing. That's what I was having trouble is the little foot was pulling it off the side and stitching off the edge because I'm doing it so close to the edge. This is probably painful to watch for people that actually know how to sew. Now I gotta remove this paper clips one by one because obviously I'll snap a needle if I try to sew over it. Here goes. It's working so far. I don't pull this whole thing off on my lap. Off. Paper clip off. RIP to that paper clip. But I lost my bottom thread. Just when it was going so smoothly, I ran out of thread on my bobbin. The whole purpose of that adhesive foam strip around the big wheel was to make reloading bobbins easier. Okay, bobbins in there. I mean, considering I am not an upholsterer and I do not sew, like it's been 20 years since the last time I sewed something. Obviously, I don't want this to look like a bonobo on meth sewed it. I have a minimum quality standard. A bonobo on meth or a baboon on shrooms. <laughs> I hope this is right. This piece is torn, so I gotta try to fix it. That's pretty impossible. I'll try though. Well, the initial setup of this machine out of the box was a bit of a pain, regardless of user error or not. Things started to move quickly once I got the hang of it and everything started working the way it was supposed to. The whole point of reusing the old vinyl is so that it matches the interior of the car since the same color of the headliner as well as the rear seat fabric. So the difficult challenge ahead was to try to sink my needle into the existing holes where the old stitches were. That way it'll be less prone to tearing and also it'll look a lot better that way. And as far as the rear, the staples, that should be fairly easy to sink into the old holes as well. As you would expect, my second attempt at doing the border for the other rear door card, like 10 times better than my first one. The improvement rate I am satisfied with. This area got so water damaged and that speaker hole looks like it was cut out with a baby shark. Man, the bobbin thread they used on this one is like a dark olive. This is gonna be hard. I don't like this. This one's gonna be way, way, way harder. Welcome to day number three in this video. I have a plan of attack and how I'm going to take care of this door card. This, this was a smart leg design. I love it. Fucking 
carpet hairs are in my mouth. So which way is the weave go on this carpet? I didn't really want to do this. I was trying to leave this on the door until I'm ready to put the new piece on there. But I don't think I can trace it like that. The rear pieces were easy because it wasn't as big, but this corner right here, I'm, the more I flip this up, the more I'm gonna screw up this seam. That work? I'm gonna cut it bigger than it has to be, just to give me extra. So that was, uh, that was kind of unnecessary to cut it out bigger, but all right. I don't, I don't, that tastes terrible. I hope I don't fuck this up. I'm gonna be a little bit on the side of having a little bit too much material. This silver Sharpie has to be one of the best working Sharpies I've ever used my entire life. Just eyeballing it, I'm still giving myself extra material from what I actually need, so. It's so hard to see the actual thread because it's like the same color. Ouch! I don't want to screw up these door cards because you cannot get this color vinyl anymore, like at all. I get it that there is a such thing as a seam ripper, but if I went to the store every single time I needed a tool, I would never get videos done. Oh, weird, it's double, there's like double bobbin thread on the back side. I cut all the bobbin thread on the back side. There was two sets of it, but only one of the decorative thread up here, and this is still intact. Expert alpaca herder, <laughs> that's what I am. One of the biggest downsides of working by yourself all the time is you have no one around you to tell you that you sound like an idiot and to shut up when you're rambling nonsense. The back side of the strip was full of all kinds of crusty old junk since it was at the bottom of the door card. The automotive equivalent of de-pooping a shrimp. Ugh, that's like tamale. This is gonna be tricky. This is so thin. Oh, sketchy. Oh, jeez. So I got plenty of room to fish the cards through here, but what I don't have is four sets of arms to be able to stabilize this thing so it doesn't fall over and puncture my bladder, crank this handle, hold this door card, stabilize it, and feed it through while also making sure that this thing is going exactly where it needs to. I don't want this thing to take off across the carpet like when you burn the fuzzies off your socks. Don't act like you've never done that before. I've done this so many times now that I've been able to just drop this thread through and not even have to use a tool to pull it. Look at that. I don't always match my top to the thread I'm using. Yeah, I do. Pinch that on. There we go. Green thread. We're not gonna talk about how I just spent an hour and a half off camera detangling all the thread out of this thing because it just decided it wanted to be like that. So, yeah. Getting this corner lined up is so hard because that way I'm doing it with the carpet facing that way. But if I do it the other way, it's just gonna be even more of a pain. So, here goes. I'm really close to the edge of the fabric. There we go. This is why I like a manual sewing machine for this better than an electric one though, because look how slow I can go and really just position it each stitch. In hindsight, it probably would have been better if I would have practiced on a piece before doing everything, but oh well. My eyes just fucking tweaked when I still looked at the camera. So you can see right here around this corner, I left a little bit more carpet past where I needed to, but I also left a little bit more carpet extra when I cut this. So I'll be able to trim that right there. I'm getting it a little bit too far on one side of the old holes. So unfortunately, I think when I fold this back, I'm gonna see some of those old holes. I don't think you'll be able to notice it as bad as what I think you will though. This is definitely something I feel if I did it more and I just had more time with it, I would get good at it pretty quick. I don't know if this is actually a thing. I think it is. I think I remember learning this in home ec, but put a little bit of super glue at the end of the thread and it like locks it in place. Keep in mind, I still gotta staple this down. I'm just lightly placing it on the door, but yeah. That's gonna be sweet. My fear of seeing some of the old stitch holes, yeah, it's non-existent. You don't see any of them, so. And these, again, these little like crinkles, once it's like pulled tight and stapled, they won't be visible. And now I got a template for the other side. That kind of looks like not good. That, yeah. It's like a boat with a portal. 
kind of neat. The edge of the carpet is green. This will be hidden, so I'm going to leave it. We'll see. Did I shape well? I shaped well. well how about that? Look at that. There's a factory screw up. It's double stitched in this area. Now again, this was not sponsored. I was stupid enough to purchase this thing. And while it looks like a piece of crap, it's kind of poorly assembled and manufactured. It works really good. It was cheaper than paying an upholstery shop to do all that, so I guess it paid itself off. Fast forward a few hours later, I got all four pieces cut out, the old carpet removed, and I was able to remove the old carpet without destroying any of the decorative stitching because it's stitched separately from the old carpet, something I wish I would have known. But once this carpet glues down in place and dries overnight, I'll then be able to glue this piece down on top of it. And as far as the stuff I removed earlier, that'll be easy to fix with some hand stitching. And then all I gotta do is pull this nice and tight and staple the backside once I get some staples. And then lastly, these little chrome decorative strips on the panels. I have some new chrome foil wrap that I'll redo this in the next video. I also have this big black roll of vinyl slash leatherette on top of the rear seat, which I'm going to use to upholster the rear package shelf, which was just painted brown from the factory. At least, that's what it looks like, pretty sure. However, the center console and the dashboard are black, as well as the Recaro seats I bought for it. So that will be the finishing touch, and then I can just install all this stuff in the car, and the interior is like 90% done. And then the next video, I will get back to work on the engine. So thank you guys for watching this video. I will see you soon with another. Bye.